the last video I talked about benign gestation trophoplastic disease and this video I'm going to talk about malignant gestation trophoplastic diseases they constitute about 20% of all GTD okay and 50% of them happen after molar pregnancy after approximately months to year okay after molar pregnancy uh, malignant gestation trophoplastic diseases will happen okay after and after 25% of normal pregnancy and after 25% of ectopic or abortion okay so most of malignant trophoplastic diseases happen after mole okay and some of them after normal pregnancy and some of them after ectopic or abortion they are subdivided into mates, okay, and non-mates malignant condition, and that to deal with these diseases, with the treatment of these diseases, and with the prognosis of these diseases, okay, and the mates malignant gestation trophoblastic are also subdivided into good prognosis and bad prognosis conditions. So let's start with the types of malignant gestation trophoplastic diseases. The first type is invasive or persistent gestational trophoplastic disease. The other type is choriocarcinoma, choriocarcinoma. And the third and final type, placental side trophoplastic tumor. Invasive or persistent type is the most common, okay, with about 75% of all malignant gestation trophoplastic disease and most of invasive persistent gestation trophoplastic disease happens uh, happen after a molar pregnancy okay so most of them happen after molar pregnancy as a result or of plateauing or raising in beta hcg after uh, uh, surgery of uh, complete or partial molar pregnancy within months to year invasive or persistent GTD happen happens okay N they are non myths so we said that the gestation the malignant uh, cases is divided into uh, are divided into myths and non myths okay so invasive uh, uh, tumors are not myths okay and can spontaneously regress so they are with good prognosis and by the way I think I said that malignant uh, GTD are the most curable tumor among all gynecological tumors and they are very responsible to responsive to chemotherapy what happens in invasive type that will lie may invade the myometra may invade the myometra so how to diagnose invasive or persistent GTD by ultrasound raising in beta HCG and clinically okay the most common presentation of invasive GTD is a bleeding a bleeding in ultrasound actually you can see intrauterine mass intrauterine mass and in doppler ultrasound you can see increasing in the uh, vascularity of the tumor okay so this is the invasive persistent gtd the most common type non meds okay and can spontaneously regress diagnosed with beta cg clinical diagnosis and ultrasound and of course with histopathology histopathology now let's move to the other type the choriocarcinoma, which represents about, represents about 25% of all malignant GTD. Choriocarcinoma, and opposite to invasive cancer, mostly happen after non molar pregnancy. Okay, we said that the in, in persistence or invasive type they happen after molar pregnancy mostly. Okay, but in choriocarcinoma, they mostly happen after non molar pregnancy and what is choriocarcinoma it is a malignant necrotizing tumor necrotizing tumor that can destruct the uterine wall 
and the vasculature of the uterus and may eventually rupture and that's why we have a huge bleeding in choriocarcinoma very huge bleeding okay due to destruction of the uterine wall and vasculature of the uterus okay so this is the choriocarcinoma the investigations of choriocarcinoma is by doing beta hcg histopathology okay histopathology is confirmative for the diagnosis x-ray for the lung and ct scan mri for the brain why because in choriocarcinoma we have a possibility of metastatic they are frequently metastatic in opposite to invasive type which uh, which is not associated with mets where does this tumor mets to, to the lung most common side to the brain okay to the liver to the vagina forming strawberry like shape of the vagina to the kidney okay the most important are actually the lung the brain and the liver vagina is the last side to Okay, so the way of metastatic is through the blood. Okay, so the hematogenous metastatic, hematogenous. The management of both persistent and choriocarcinoma is similar. So they are treated with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. The main treatment of choice in these two malignant or malignancy in uh, these two malignancy is chemotherapy but in the benign conditions as you saw the most common treatment is uh, surgery okay suction and evacuation so chemotherapy is treatment in the malignancy uh, inv especially invasive and choriocarcinoma what type of chemotherapy we use methotrexate or actinomycin when do we use one agent and when do you use two agents single agent is used in lower risk patient okay so we have multiple <coughs> uh, we, we use multiple agents in high risk in high risk patient or in the cases of meds to the liver to the brain etc we use <coughs> sorry multiple agents like methotrexate actinomycin and we have to follow up the patient just like as we followed up the patient in the benign condition beta stg within 48 hours then weekly uh, we have to have three consecutive negative uh, values okay uh, and if we okay three consecutive negative values if there is no cure like if we have uh, raising or plateauing beta CG then we have to move to hysterectomy. hysterectomy. Prognosis actually in choriocarcinoma is and invasive persistent is pretty good. Okay, in, in non meds cases about 95 to 100 percent uh, the prognosis and uh, survival of course in prognosis and in in uh, meds cases, uh, the numbers uh, reach 70%, so it's very uh, good malignancy uh, relatively when compared with other malignancies, okay? So now let's move to the most uh, or to, to the worst among them and to the rarest malignancy, not 25%, very rare uh, condition which is a placenta site trophoplastic tumor what distinguishes placenta site trophoplastic tumors is that beta CG is usually low okay whether normal or lower than normal not like choriocarcinoma and invasive uh, GTD uh, these two uh, have high very high beta CG but in placenta site trophoplastic we have low beta CG so it can't work as a tumor marker we use a human placenta lactogen lactogen okay will raise 
so we can use it as a tumor worker. The placental site trophoblastic tumor actually is the worst and the only treatment of it is by surgery, okay, radical hysterectomy with bilateral oophorectomy, uh, okay, and survival rate will be not over two years, so more than two years, okay. They present with uh, vaginal bleeding like the previous two types, okay, vaginal bleeding. <coughs> And actually, they will no, they will not be uh, uh, sack in this in this time. So it's actually the worst among them. Okay, so it can be diagnosed by ultrasound, histopathology. Okay, in addition to the surgeries of uh, radical hysterectomy and bilateral oophorectomy, we introduced chemo and radiotherapy, okay? And the prognosis, I said, is very, very bad in placental site trophoplasticity. So these are the malignancies of trophoplastic, uh, trophoplastic diseases, gestational disease. And by this I end this subject, wishing that you uh, had a good information about this diverse group of diseases and see you in the next video. Thank you very, very much for watching.